Okay, so this video is going to be providing an introduction into the functions sine, cosine, and tangent. And sometimes these are called the trigonometric functions. They're very important, they seem to come up all the time in loads of applications. And we're going to look at the definition and also the graph, so what they look like. So to provide a definition for these, we need to look at this graph. And here we have a circle, and on it we're looking at a point with coordinates x, y. So this is a general point here. And to make things a little bit easier, we're going to consider just a unit circle. So we're going to say it has radius 1. So this length here is equal to 1. And then to think about cosine, sine, tangent, we need to construct a triangle. So we denote this angle theta. We drop this vertical line down. So it makes 90 degrees with the x-axis. And now we have a right angle triangle. So let me just sketch this out again so we can see it a bit clearer. It's going to be this triangle. This is 90 degrees, as we said, this is theta, and this is equal to 1. But since we call this coordinate x, y, it tells us the, the horizontal width and the vertical height. So just by definition, this is x and this is y. So we kind of want to generalize uh, the idea of Sokotoa, if you've heard it. So sine in a triangle is the ratio of the opposites divided by the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tan is the ratio of those two. The only problem with that is that it doesn't account for negative values because a triangle always has positive links. But here, if we work in this circle, we can have negative coordinates. So I'm just going to write off the definitions and then we're going to see why it's true. So sine of theta in this, um, in this scenario, sine of theta, we define it as the vertical height. So just the opposite side, y. And then cosine of theta, we define it as the horizontal distance, just x. Then tan of theta we define as the ratio of the vertical height, y, to the horizontal length, so y divided by x. And just to make the connection with the definition you might be familiar with, sine would normally have uh, be defined as the opposite side divided by hypotenuse side. Uh, but for this triangle, the opposite is y and the hypotenuse is equal to 1. So y divided by 1 is just y, so it does agree with this idea, cosine. Sometimes it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Here the adjacent is x and the hypotenuse is again 1. So x divided by 1 is just x. And then tan is the opposite divided by the adjacent. And this is indeed y divided by x. So as I was saying, the reason why these definitions are more general is because this allows for negative lengths essentially because we don't really have a negative length on a, a triangle. but if this point was in the second quadrant, then the value of x would be negative. And so cosine could be negative here. And then same for sine, if we this coordinate was down here, then y, sine of theta, y, would be negative. And so to think about how these functions evolve over time, you can think of picking up this point and then just moving it around the circle like this. And then sine is just going to be the vertical height. So as this point moves, it's going to be the vertical height. It's going to oscillate between 1 and minus 1. Cosine is going to be the horizontal width. So this is going to also oscillate between 1 and minus 1, but just slightly out of phase. And then tan is going to be a bit different because it's kind of the ratio between sine and cosine. So let's look at the graphs of these three functions now. So if I draw out the xy plane, um, so this is x and this is y. Let's look at sine first. So sine is a sinusoidal curve, so kind of... It looks something like this, it oscillates up and down like this. It's kind of a wavy function. So let me just label this as sine of x. And what's characteristic about this function, it has a period, so it repeats every 360 degrees. So if this is 660 degrees, this is zero. Um, it repeats every 360 degrees, and it kind of makes sense because if we move around the circle, this circle is kind of symmetric rotationally for every 660 uh, 60 degrees. So if we pick, the, pick up this point and move it around a complete turn of the circle, we're going to be at the same point as we were before. So it kind of makes sense that this function is periodic and we get this wavy pattern where it goes between 1 and minus 1. And let me just mark on these points because they're quite important. So when it hits 0 in between, this is 180 degrees. And we can kind of see on this uh, graph that the height of this point, if we start here, if this is the start, then it starts at zero, the height, it goes to one, goes to zero, goes to minus one. So this is kind of where we get zero, one, zero, minus one. So this is 180 degrees, this one would be 90 degrees. 
and this is 270 degrees. You could also think about this in terms of radians if you're familiar with that. Angle notation is just a different way of measuring the angle. So this is what sine looks like. Then cosine is very similar. In fact, it's pretty much the same function. It's just shifted slightly because cosine is now the horizontal width. So if we start here, then the horizontal width is one, but then it goes to zero, uh, goes to minus one, then back to zero, and then back to one. So it's gonna look the same, it's gonna be oscillating, but it's just gonna be starting at a different point. So we can sketch the cosine graph as well. I'll do it over here. And as I was saying, it's gonna be very similar. This is the XY plane. This time it starts at one, and then it kind of goes down and then back up and down and it oscillates like this and it's periodic again. So this is the point zero when X is zero, but it now has wind step one. As we were saying, this is because we start here and then the horizontal width is one, but then it goes back to zero and this happens at 90 degrees now. This is 180, this is 270, and then a full period is 360 degrees. So this is back up to one. And yeah, I should say this is minus one as well, the dip. So yeah, now you can see visually that these functions are very similar. They've got the same shape. They're just uh, shifted slightly. So this one starts at zero, this one starts at 90. But if we shifted cosine to the right by 90 degrees, we'd actually get sine. So finally, let's look at tan. This is gonna be a little bit different because it's defined as a ratio of y and x. So if I just draw the graphs here, tan is gonna have kind of a wavy pattern again, but it's gonna look a bit different. So it's gonna, I'm just gonna sketch it on. So it's up like this. And then we have a point here, which we'll get to in a bit. This is called an asymptote, but it repeats. So it's kind of periodic again, get another asymptote and it carries on like this. Now the asymptote is where the function isn't defined anywhere. And this is because we are dividing by X. So as X uh, approaches zero, then we are kind of dividing by zero, which isn't something we want to do. And then this quantity goes up to infinity. So this is where this graph is increasing rapidly up to infinity and it's not gonna be defined. So when does X equals zero, the horizontal distance, this is when theta is gonna be 90 degrees. So this is uh, the point 90 degrees and it repeats every 180 degrees. So this is 270 degrees. And then this is 360. So we have a full period here. It's again periodic, just because these two functions are periodic. So then I should mark this is 180 degrees, but now the range isn't between minus one and one. It's actually between minus infinity and infinity, just because X can uh, be arbitrarily small, which makes this function arbitrarily big in both uh, directions, positive infinity and minus infinity. So this video was just to give you a little introduction into these functions, uh, kind of give you an idea of the shape of the graphs and how they're defined. Um, we're gonna look at a few more videos where we kind of use this idea to solve some problems.